Why do you believe that your daughter is sleeping with your boyfriend? I heard her in a room and him in a room. Ooh, Enos, ooh, Enos, ooh, Jay, ooh, Jay. And I have butt prints on my carpet in my in my bathroom. Look like her butt print, not my butt print. Could you be just, just a touch paranoid? Paranoid? Yeah. For what? I can't believe you accused me of sleeping with your boyfriend. And she's delusional. She's been going crazy because she's doing crack. Yeah, I can do crack all day long, and I'm still going to hear what I hear and see what I see. You didn't mention the part about you doing crack. I think this issue and this story has changed tremendously. It's really not funny anymore. My biggest fear for my best friend is that she's gonna end up dead. I know all along she's been doing it, heroin. It breaks my heart. I had a seizure in the term blue. I was just dead to the world. And I'm not ready for the world to shut off yet. I think I wanna live. You're here. You have an opportunity of a lifetime. I believe that you're sincere, but I also know the desire for drugs can be even more powerful than wanting to change your own life. I'm gonna die. There's nothing even getting me high anymore. If you don't get treatment, you're scared. I know where you live. I'm gonna, gonna come, come find you. you. Trisha says that her teenage daughter, Jarnay, is sleeping with her 48-year-old boyfriend, Enos. But Jarnay says she would never portray her mother and claims she's a virgin. Wow. However, Trisha believes Enos would pretend to leave her house and sneak into Jarnay's bedroom to have sex with her. Oh. Both Enos and Jarnay say Trisha has lost her mind. Take a look. I was dating a lady named Trish for about six months. And one day she accused me of sleeping with her daughter. She said that I was sneaking in there, sleeping with her at nighttime. When I take her to work or take her to drop her off at her friend's house, we weren't actually going there. I was actually taking her to my house and then, you know, having sex with her, and it's not true. At the time, John Nate was 17 years old. I have children the same age, around that age. And it's, it, it's nothing that I wouldn't never, ever do nothing like that. Me and her daughter got along really well. We had a perfect relationship. We had a daughter relationship. Sad to see a, a, a mother and a daughter's relationship going down the drain over something that's not true. I hope her and her daughter gets her relationship together. But as far as me, I'm out of the picture. It's crazy. Nothing happened between me and her daughter. It didn't happen. Trisha, why do you believe that your daughter is uh, sleeping with your boyfriend? Well, first off, Steve, that's not my boyfriend. That's no longer my man. Uh, he's no longer in my life. Uh, last, uh, the, the reason why I believe is because of all the evidence that I found in her room and around my house. And, you know, he's sneaking out the house. Why are you sneaking out the house if you're just leaving what out you, my house? What do, you, what do you mean he was sneaking He would, out like, make excuses like, okay, your bed is too lumpy, it hurts my back, and all these other excuses and stuff. And I, I'm going to go home and sleep in my own bed. But instead of going home, I believe he'll wait for me to pass out and fall asleep. Then he would l pretend to leave my house and go and sleep get to my daughter's room and have sex with my daughter. In the same house? In the same house, in the room next to me. On top of that, I also... Are you that also... heavy... Now, and I'm not trying to be funny here. Are you that heavy of a sleeper that you wouldn't hear that's your my daughter? Whole, that's my whole point, Steve. Sorry to cut you off, but that's my whole entire point because of the simple fact that I believe that I was being drugged. I uh, would find, like, little, like, uh, allergy tab, you know, the caps from the allergy tabs around the house. He, like I said, being overly nice, wants, oh, do you want me to get you some beer? Do you want me to get you some beer? Normally, I'm going to get my own beer. What do I need you for? I'm not handicapped. Okay, that's when I believe that he was doing that, and that's why I believe that I was overly sleeping, where I'm going from sleep from anywhere from four to maybe three to four hours. Now, I'm sleeping from six to nine hours and all day and, and not able to get up. something in your Yes, I, no, I, yes, I do. I strongly believe that. And also, there's too much evidence. Like I said, I'm going into her room after she leaves. I go into her room because, first off, the reason why I wanted to go into her room to check was because I'm knocking on the door. It takes her anywhere from five to ten minutes to come to the door when her door, her bedroom's right at the door. I mean, we ain't got no, we ain't it's got no a lunch house. It's a little Exactly, it's a little bit of bedroom. Yeah, so I would, why, and then I'm hearing all this ruffling before she gets to the door. So I'm like, okay, when she leaves, I go in her room, I flip her bed up. Uh, first off, her bed is messy around it. All these clothes all around his bed. But underneath this bed, spotless. Spotless. All that's under there is a little thin pillow, which is what he prefers, a little thin pillow. On top of that, see, then, <laughs> I'm sorry, but, it's uh, not well, funny, but, but I on mean, top of that, but I the go mess into is my all room. around the yes, bed, right? exactly. It's but a cover-up for him being underneath the bed. That's where he goes to when oh, I go and knock on the door. What other evidence do you have? I mean, I have butt prints on my, on my, on my carpet in my, in my bathroom. Come on, explain. You it's not my butt, butt prints. prints. On the carpet. Yes, look like her butt print, not my butt print. <laughs> then on top of this, I mean, I, I'm asking, I'm going around, I'm asking, where's my 
Where's my? I don't know why I know my. Your but now when I go into her room and pull her basket and go through her whole little house, her whole little room in her room, I go through this basket. Here's my. Here's some lube. I don't use lube, bro. Uh, on top of that, uh, she got some uh, some condoms. Come on now. Uh, uh virgins don't keep condoms. Virgins don't keep lube. And virgins, damn, so don't need really no. Use my friends. <laughs> Then, what was the thing about the virgins again? Uh, <laughs> I don't believe that if you're a virgin, you need. What do you need a virgin? What do you need for if you're a virgin? <laughs> I don't. I, what do you need? I have no for idea. If you're a virgin? <laughs> I mean. You're right. You got tons of evidence. Tons. I have more. Uh, no, that, but that's enough. You um, sure? No. <laughs> I, it can't be enough, Steve, because I know. I want to go to the day before her birthday. Can I go to her birthday? Can I go to her birthday when I heard her in a room and him in a room and I heard, ooh, ooh, Enos, ooh, Enos, ooh, Jay, ooh, Jay. I'm like, oh, hold on. So I, I'm thinking it's on the TV because I'm watching TV. So I mute the TV and all of a sudden I'm still, ooh, Enos, ooh, Enos, ooh, Jay, ooh, Jay. I'm like, oh, I ha oh hell, no, I know y'all lost y'all mind up my house. And what did you do? I got up and I went to her door, knocked on the door. Heard that same little, little scuffling, you know what I'm saying, where well, he getting this little crimey ass under her bed. And it was, uh, was he in there? How would I know? She ran out the house so fast, so I'm waiting uh, to see what's going on. Then I go in my bathroom and find an earring. The earring don't belong to me, it don't belong to her, so she claimed. So I don't know what's really going on. And she's delusional. She's been going crazy because she's doing crack. Yeah, I can do crack all day long, and I'm still going to hear what I hear and see what I see. You didn't mention the part about you doing crack. I think this issue and this story has changed tremendously. It's really not funny anymore. She's been going crazy because she's doing crack. Yeah, I can do crack all day long, and I'm still going to hear what I hear and see what I see. Could you be just, just a touch paranoid? Paranoid? Yeah. For what? For him? No, that your daughter's sleeping with your ex-boyfriend. Uh, no, I'm hoping to pray she ain't, but I'm saying I know I'm not delusional, and I know what I hear. I mean, I hear what I hear. And what'd you hear again? Enos. Oh, Enos. Oh, Enos. Oh, Enos. Oh, Jay. Oh, Jay. Make and my have you ever asked? Crawl. Did you ever? I asked Enos. Yes, and I did. did and he said, I don't even believe you'd even ask me something like that. Don't dodge my question. <laughs> um, I gotta imagine you and your daughter's relationship isn't. It's, solid it's right deteriorated. Now. No, it's not solid. But you know what? Bottom line, no matter what happens, that's still my baby. Of that's course, still my heart. Yeah. Unconditional love all the way. But now, as far as Enos goes, that's a wrap. That's a that's a wrap. I don't want Enos. Uh, I, Anybody in the world can have Edith. I don't want him. How do you pronounce your daughter's name again? Jarnay. Jarnay. Let's bring out Jarnay. I can't believe you accused me of sleeping with your boyfriend. Oh, oh, Regardless yeah, of what you, you say, know. if I'm your you baby girl and you love oh, me yeah, so I mean, much that you had your woman, I'm pulling on your bed. Oh, my God, God. really? Someone is a fan in your pillow. Come on. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I hope. Uh, I, hold yeah, on. You, hold on. You can't, you know, throw insults at your children. And you are so right. You because are if so you do right, that, you're I, doing more damage than good. Exactly. Okay. And you are. I agree with that one million percent. Okay. Then don't call me names. Okay. Most definitely. Um, so I'll ask you point blank. Did you have sex with her boyfriend? No, I would never sleep with her boyfriend. That's so disgusting. Like I said, nobody wanted him but her. Right. Um, why do you think your mother thinks that you did? Because she's delusional. She's been going crazy because she's doing crack. She's been going oh, crazy. Okay, I was doing crack, but that ain't got nothing to do with it. Yeah, I can do crack all day long, and I'm still going to hear what okay. I hear and see Hold what on I hear. You hear it, though? Why wouldn't you come in the room and be like, I did oh, let me room. look in oh, here. Let me look you under your what bed you with one pillow. What did you say? Hold on, Mom. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. 
Stepped on the foot. You didn't, okay. You didn't mention the part about you doing crack. <laughs> no, I didn't. Um, I was, but I'm no longer doing it since that you were, day. You were doing crack. Yes, I was. Okay. Don't you see a very huge, and I want you to calm down for a second, okay? You have your 18-year-old daughter on stage, okay? Mm-hmm. It's really not funny anymore. Mm-hmm. You are saying on TV, in front of your child, that you do crack. That's a big, big problem. No, that was a big, big problem. And that's because I had lost my job, I was going through depression, and I thought that it would make me better, but it made everything worse. I lost uh, my kids, right. I lost my, I lost okay. being able to see my grandchild okay. and all that. Okay. And that's why so when they did crack, an intervention with me, when I went to your when life, that, right? Yeah, it did. Okay. And then when I went so to So wouldn't you be fair to say that couldn't you have been wrong under the influence of crack to think that your daughter was sleeping with your boyfriend? No, because of the simple fact that, like I said, um, I've heard it. There are no simple after. facts when you're doing crack. No, I'm saying after, even after, even after I stopped, it was still okay. Her attitude How long have you stopped? Saying, she's been cussing you me out. Stay, about two me weeks. Weeks. How long have you stopped? It's been about around her, around the time. Uh, like how long is the day it after her birthday or something? It was and the day on my birthday. And I, how long is that? I said the day after your birthday. And how long is that? Um, I think I spent, that was the 21st of September. Okay, so you've been off it for not even three weeks. No, not even three weeks. Would you be fair to say that you still have a drug problem? No, because I haven't. That's my point. I haven't. Your daughter came here. She took a lie detector test. I, I certainly believe that this has a lot to do with your drug usage. Would you be fair to say that you still have a drug problem? No, because I haven't. That's my point. I haven't. How long were you on crack? Um, about six months. Six months. Six okay. Months. That's a long time. Yes. And you got off of it. But I'm, I'm saying, yeah, listen, but I'm saying, but you I don't think you, of listen, it at that time. And, you don't think I'm, of it and see you, it until after somebody on the outside looking into it. And if you stopped. And you, and you keep going on the path of staying sober and clean and off it, I'm proud of you, and I hope you keep going down that path for your daughter's sake and your sake. Um, your other daughter's here. Let's find out what she has to say. Mom, at first, I did believe what you were saying, but it's a lot of stuff that's starting to really make me think that it's the crack that has you saying this stuff. I understand stuff. everything what you're saying, but like I'm saying, okay, you weren't there. You didn't hear none of what I but heard. Still, you didn't see none of what I seen. You but didn't still, get, you don't hear the that you said about me that's making me truly believe this. Like, you done lost pretty much your whole family over this. You got grandbabies you should be thinking about. You doing this. Exactly, like, and that's my whole point and why I'm... What, what did I call you and ask you to do the other night? I understand. Okay, I understand, so I mean, but... it's not like I'm not trying to get better, but then when you calling people and you reaching out and people ignoring you like you're nothing, but, I mean, what okay, do you feel? When I found you know, this out about then, you, know, you, I couldn't even deal with I it. Told I told you talking first. to you for a while because I'm like, how can I deal with this? You didn't even find out. That I was told talking you. about these people originally. See, this was so confusing. Okay, you didn't, they didn't sec. find me, this out. Me, this is something that I told them voluntarily to ask for help. I want you to look at this from a different... I did tell you. Hold on. You told me I want you to look at this from a different angle, okay? Uh, just for a second. Now, and I hope, you know, you came here and you took a lie detector test. And I believe you. I'm hoping that you didn't do it, but I also believe that you didn't. But what if, you know, 17-year-old girl's at home and her mom starts doing crack cocaine, right? Mm -hmm. And I got to imagine there was times when you were on, under an influence that you did some crazy stuff on crack, okay? Nobody just sits and, like, smokes crack and then just lays there, you know. That does, you know, doesn't happen. So what if, and, and I'm just saying this, and I'm sure it didn't happen, but what if she said, oh my God, my mom, I see, she's doing crack, she's doing crack for six months, and here the boyfriend's like a nice guy, and he's, he's not doing crack, I'm assuming he wasn't doing crack? From my understanding, he does everything. He does, but did you ever see him do it? No. Okay. So, maybe she felt like, oh my God, my mom's gone and doing crack, this guy's nice, and uh, she draws closer to him, because he's not doing drugs. 
You know what I mean? I know exactly what you mean, but okay. she has a father. She don't need him to be her father. But who's in the house? That's the point. He stopped sleeping over to my house. Well, because maybe his girlfriend was doing crack cocaine. No, nah, that's not why. It was the excuse of the bed and everything else. Okay. You know, fair enough, but I, I find that hard to believe. Because I'll just say this. If I had been dating anybody and they started doing a serious narcotic, uh, drug, anything like that, I would break up with them also. No, he didn't break up with me. I broke up with him. And he, he was part of the problem, too, because he was the one who was having me to go and do it so that I could make money. He had you go do it? Yeah, to, with other men so I could make money. Okay. So what's the difference in him and me? Can you just leave the stage for a second? Just for a quick second. Let's have a seat here. I'm not being mean right now, okay? Oh, you, you know what? Even if you are, Steve, I need it. You probably do. I need some tough yeah. love. Real talk. I don't um, have it, I need it. I say this from the bottom of my heart. I think that crack ate a part of your brain away. Okay. Because you're saying things up here that it, it, it's got to be just destroying your children. You know, you're talking about you're out doing some things for money. I don't know if that serves a purpose here. I mean, you as a mom could say, no, you're not going to do drugs because you screw your whole life up. And I think they're getting a firsthand account of that. Mm -hmm. And hopefully they take it in the right direction. Hey, I don't want to do what my mom did. Exactly. And I don't want I, I mean, to live is, the life I, I mean, lived. you came here, and I'm reading the cards. And when the show started, I'm having a couple laughs because it's kind of funny in a way. But you didn't mention crack usage. You didn't mention that you were doing things to get crack. It's not funny anymore. I think this issue and this story has changed tremendously. We gave you a drug test? Yep. And you've been out drugs for how long? At least about close to three weeks. Three weeks. And you tested positive for marijuana mm -hmm. and cocaine. Marijuana, yeah, but cocaine. You no. tested positive for it. Okay. Would you be fair to say that you still have a drug problem? No, because I have it. That's my point. I have it. Daughter came here. She took a lie detector test. I, I certainly believe that this has a lot to do with your drug usage. My biggest fear for my best friend is that she's gonna end up dead. I had a seizure and then turned blue. I was just dead to the world, and I'm not ready for the world to shut off yet. I think I want to live. You are the cop. Get off my stage. When your daughter came here, she took a lie detector test. I, I certainly believe that this has a lot to do with your drug usage. Be honest with me, Most okay? Most definitely. I be am honest. Being, I'm, I'm being I'm, I'm gonna ask you a million question, percent and honest. I, want, I want you to be 100% honest with me. Because I, I want help for you and your children. And I'm going to help. I'm going to give you a lot of help. When's the last time you did cocaine? The day after her birthday. And that was three weeks ago? The 21st of, 22nd okay. of September. That would not be still in your system if you did that. I have not smoked any cocaine since the day after her birthday. Have you did any other? Marijuana. What else? That was it. Come on. Just marijuana. And, do, do, and you're saying you have a problem, right? I'm saying, yeah, I'm saying because I still okay. have urges. I still have the thoughts. Would you like to go to rehab? Definitely would love to go to rehab. That's what I called my daughter champagne for the other night when the, when the show wasn't called back. That's what I called, that's, what, that's when I was saying what I asked her for the All other right. night, that was what well, I told her. Well, I mean, this was like to be a lie detector test show. Yeah. But this show, you never know where it's going, and now it's here. And we have a mom that, let's face it, you were doing crack. Mm -hmm. And I don't know a lot of people who just get off crack by just stopping. You know, your daughter came here. She took a lie detector test. I, I certainly believe that this has a lot to do with your drug usage, your paranoia. And you know, it's funny. You never even told me about crack. 
But I asked you if you were paranoid. I'm not paranoid. Yeah, I think you're definitely going to need a little rehab. You want to read that? So the audience wants to know, was your daughter sleeping with your boyfriend? No. I think there's a young woman that has a tremendous weight just lifted off her shoulders back there. Uh, let's, br let's bring your daughters back up. I am so, 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 I can't get on my hands and knees long enough to tell you how sorry I am that I let a drug make me believe that you would do something horrible to me. I, I love you. Never, I, I love, love you. All I do I'm is going try to, get to help. please you. I'm going to get help, and you've done that. You've done that a million percent. You've done that one billion percent. Now I got to do it for you. Now I got to do it for you. So do it for you. I'm so sorry, baby. I can't even apologize enough. Steve, I'm ready for rehab. I'm ready. Um. <laughs> I'm glad you are. And I hope this, like I said at the beginning, I hope this helps you. Um, forget about all that silly hey. nonsense about the sleep with the boyfriend. It had to be tough watching your mom doing what she was doing. Um, we want to help your mother. We want to send her to rehab. Um, Jeff Vauxhall, who's here? Jeff, you want to come up? Yeah. Um, <laughs> how you doing, Jeff? I'm so sorry, baby. Uh, it's okay, Trisha? Yes, Jesus. Jeff is an addiction specialist from American Addiction Centers. Um, we work through um, A Better Tomorrow. They've merged. And Jeff is here to help you and help your family. Okay. Uh, what do you want to say, Jeff? Um, I just want to congratulate you on taking this offer that Steve's offering you. Definitely. Um, today could be a whole new day for you. Things could change. If you want it and you accept it, things I could change. I want my strength back. And we want to help you with that. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you so much, Steve. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I can't thank you guys and you're, enough, and you're ready to say goodbye to your daughters, leave the stage, Go with Jeff and go get cleaned up. No, I've been ready. You're, you're ready to I've do I've been that. ready. All right. Good luck, you sweetie. Thank you, baby. Trisha made a great decision to attend rehab that day, but unfortunately, she did not complete the program. We recently received an update from her daughter, Charnay. Here's what she had to say. Hi, Steve. This is Charnay. I was just calling to give you an update of what has been going on. My mom decided to leave two weeks early from rehab, and it's disappointing. I thought that once she completed it, and after the show, me and her would be closer again, but nothing has really changed. She still accused me of everything, and it's just heartbreaking. I was really hoping that me and her would have that mother-daughter relationship that we were supposed to be having, but I guess not. But I'd like to thank you guys all for your help. Sharnay, I was very sorry to hear that your mother left the program early. Hopefully she will eventually beat this addiction and you can have the mother you deserve. And as always, I'm only a phone call away. My biggest fear for my best friend is that she's gonna end up dead. I had a seizure and then turned blue. I was just dead to the world and I'm not ready for the world to shut off yet. I think I wanna live. I believe that you're sincere. 
But I also know the desire for drugs can be even more powerful than wanting to change your own life. I do want to get better. Yes, and I just feel like every other time it's been like, oh, I'm going to go to a program to, so my dad lets me live there. I'm going to go because it's cold and it's winter. Now it's I'm going to go because I'm going to die. There's nothing even getting me high anymore. I shot four bags of dope this morning in one shot and I don't even feel high. That's bad. <laughs> Looking at you was, uh, you know, taking a snapshot in, a, a snapshot in time. You know, we just flashed a picture of you as a little girl with your dad, uh, you know, with the snow and probably every, a good time. I mean, probably your dad couldn't be any happier with his little girl and all the dreams he had for her. And I, and, and, and I say it to almost every, uh, every person that's in this situation on my show. What did you dream when you were a little kid? What did you think you wanted to be with your life? When I was like young, young, and the typical, what do you want to be? I want to be a lawyer. But then as I got old, like in high school, I took the child care classes. And like I've worked, when I did work, I was like a teacher's assistant. And after working so many months, you become like a, um, certified through that. And like right. I had the dream to want to go and be, get a certificate to be the lead teacher in a preschool. And, and even uh, like I went to um, Lincoln so work I want to work and... with kids and people, and I want to help people because my life wasn't even good growing up. And like I know what it's like to just. Be, just be miserable, and right? I just and help. That, that, and that, that, like that's a great dream. You wanted to help be with Whether kids, it's animals, and, or people. I just want to help. Right. And here, now, what are you doing with your life? Nothing. I'm a waste Nothing. of skin. Literally, I have no purpose other than to get people drugs. I'm a waste of life. Like it's bad. And I just feel like in the past, like where I'm from, in the past two months, eight people have died. They held a town meeting because eight people just overdosed and died in a month and a half. Like everybody's dying, and I, don't, I had a seizure before um, because of I did too much coke. And like when I woke up from that, it wasn't like I seen a white light, and like I had a seizure and then turned blue. And when I woke up, it wasn't like I seen a white light, and it was all, I was just dead to the world. Like the world was shut off to me, and I'm not ready for the world to shut off yet. Like I want to live. Like I, I don't know. I feel like if my mom's watching me, I want to make her proud. Like I just want to be a normal person. <laughs> I want to get up and take a shower because that's what people do, not because it's been 12 days and I'm on a run and haven't showered and because I don't care to because I'm doing dope and it might waste my dope if I get in the shower. You know? Like, I just want to be normal. How did, how did you get here? Like, on, the, like here on my with show, you? yeah. How did you get I on the show? I called. I watch your show every day anyways. love you. But, <laughs> like, it's on in every TV in my house uh, at 12 o'clock. And, and, like, I just, there was no email for you or it gave me a phone number and... Whatever, I ain't gonna lie, I was shooting coke and I was just on a mission to do some type, do something. I was gonna get help, that was it, I knew it. Cause the, like going to detoxes on my own and around where I'm from, doesn't, it, it's clearly not working. And like, I'm just, it's just a different feeling this time. So I called and left a message and they called me back. And here you are. Yeah. <laughs> and that's a big step into changing your life? I almost threw up when she said from the Steve Oko show when she called me. I literally, I was shocked. I was in <laughs> shock. I didn't put my phone down from that moment. I had it in my hand the whole time. And you know what? We've, if, and you say you watch the show a lot, we've had a lot of great success in helping some young people turn their lives around. Um, and we've had some failures. We got people that go to rehab and said, you know what? I don't want to be here. I don't want to do the work. I'm out. And they left. And it's, it's always disappointing to me, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like, here you have the opportunity of a lifetime. Uh, from what I understand, 50 times in and out of uh, detox programs. Your dad spent a lot of money. I got a good friend who tells me a story. He spent over a half million dollars trying to get his son off drugs. Half a million dollars. Think about that. Um, we have Jeff Vashal from, uh, he's a specialist from American Addiction Centers. He's here. Let's bring Jeff up right now. Hi, 
have this for you. How are you doing? I'm nice Jeff. To meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, Jeff, you know, we worked in cooperation with your facility and had a lot of success. Um, changed people's lives, saved their lives, uh, do a great job. Here, again, here's a case. You're here. You have opportunity of a lifetime. What I don't want to hear is two days from now, Jeff calls the show and says, yeah, she left. She took off. Um, I believe that you're sincere, but I also know the desire for drugs can be even more powerful than wanting to change your own life. I tried methadone clinics, Suboxone clinics. Like, it's not an option for me to just leave this time. Like, after the, all this, that's not an option. It's like I can just go leave and go home. Yeah. It's not an option. Yeah. Keep looking at my arms. Okay. I can see it. You're going you're gonna to leave with Jeff. Okay. And you're going to go straight to rehab, and you're going to go get clean. But I'm going to hold you accountable. Okay. If you leave, and you're not far from me. <laughs> you're scary. I know where you live. I'm gonna come find you. I hope so. There's there's the promise. If you leave that facility and you don't get treatment, I'm gonna track you down. And I'm gonna come get you. I want you to beat it. And I want you to make something in your life. And I hope that you fulfill your dream of helping little kids being somebody to protect little kids. That's everybody in this room right now is rooting for, nobody, nobody is rooting against you. Everybody's rooting for you. So, the update's gonna be that you walk out after you completed the program and you're gonna be like, oh my God, I'm changing my life. That's three week program or in three weeks, we're going to do a, a show about me walking the streets looking for you. Okay. So it's all up to you what kind of update we do. Okay. Are you ready? Ready as I'll ever be, yeah. Let's go. I am proud to say that Jessica is currently still in rehab and on her way to completing the program. And stay tuned in the upcoming weeks because Jessica will be back with an update. You are the fire. Get off my stage. We'll be going back to California to a social model inpatient program. Um, it'll be taking part with um, counseling to deal with the drug addiction, relapse prevention, um, therapy to deal with any other underlying issues such as anxiety, depression, or anything else that there might be. Um, we welcome you over there. We want you to stay with us. We want to help you become the person that you want to be. Not that we want you to be, but we want to help you become the person that you want to be. We want to help you obtain your goals. So, we welcome you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you.